everyone, welcome to New York Comic Con's Metaverse Live, where we bring the convention experience to you. I am Vampy, your host for today. We are so insanely excited. The Metaverse is entering the stone world. In 2019, lightning struck and brought the Shonen Jump series Dr. Stone to North America and the masses. If you're an anime fan, you've definitely heard of Dr. Stone since it was a highly coveted and promoted new series. It didn't take long for people to become hooked. Between the eclectic cast, the art style, and the original story, it created a buzz within the anime community. And it quickly soared to one of the most watched on everyone's list, including mine. Before I go on, I want to introduce you to our first guest, who's best known for his roles in My Hero Academia, Attack on Titan, and Dragon Ball, just to name a few. He is not only a talented voice actor, he is also the voice director for Dr. Stone, the amazing Clifford Chapin. Hi, how you doing? Oh, uh, how are you doing, Clifford? Good I'm doing good. Here. Yeah, good to see you. Thank you so much for having me. Yes, how are you feeling? Oh, very tired. <laughs> well, that's very honest of you. But thank you so much for being here. I'm exci Hi. excited to interview you today. I'm excited to be here. Thank you so yes, much. Awesome. Well, um, our next guest has worked on Full Metal Alchemist, Black Clover, and also My Hero Academia. Please welcome the voice of Senkyu Ishigami. We have Aaron Dismuk. Hi. Hello, Aaron. <laughs> How's Thank it going? Thank you for being here. Yeah, good to be here. Yes. Um, how are you feeling? Awesome. Oh, great. Yeah. I, well, I, I um, slept enough, unlike some people. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. Did I the right direction? I meant. <laughs> yeah, <it's fine. laughs> well, you guys all look great. So that's that's good. So I'm um, going to actually talk about our next guest. You have seen their work on various anime series, such as one of my favorites, One Piece, Danganronpa, Overlord, as well as, surprise, My Hero Academia. Please welcome the voice of Kohaku, the amazing Felicia Angel. Oh, welcome, Felicia. Hello. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. Yes. How, how are you feeling? You look great. Blessed and highly caffeinated. <laughs> <laughs> I think all of us are. But you know what? I'm so happy to have you here. Um, and last but not least, our next guest, guest worked on Attack on Titan, Yuri on Ice, and also My Hero Academia. Please welcome the voice of Kinro, Josh Greeley. Hello, Josh. Hey, how's it going? Yes, welcome. Thanks so much for having me. Oh, man, I really need to calm my nerves because this is just amazing <laughs> to have all of you here. Um, you know, Dr. Stone is a huge success all over the world and in the hearts of anime fans. It's actually a title that is rather wholesome and very intelligent. Um, Dr. Stone took anime to another level um, we weren't used to, and it's insanely different from other Shonen Jump titles, which was a breath of fresh air for many. Um, which leads to the first question I wanted you um, to answer, uh, which was, what was your thought of the series when you first got the script and how that came about? Pretty much the oranges and story. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, I guess I'll start us off, right? Uh, so, Dr. Stone was one of those shows where uh, when it was sort of getting announced, uh, I saw some buzz about it and some of my friends were talking about it and was like, there's this show coming up. If, if, you, can, if you can get on it, if you can get on the directing for it, uh, you'd probably really like it. And I was like, okay. And so I, I looked into it a little bit and I was like, oh, it does seem, does seem pretty exciting. And, you know, and I grew up pretty familiar with Shonen Jump. Um, and their other titles. And so uh, I know that a lot of them turn out to be really good and, and enjoyable. Um, so I put in uh, my request that it was a show I was interested in working on. Um, and I was fortunate enough to be assigned it. Uh, so I, I got the manga. Once I knew that it was going to be coming my way, I got the manga for, I think there were only... I think there were only five volumes out in the states uh, as of that moment, and uh, and I started reading through them um, to get versed in the characters and all their little quirks and and everything, and uh, and it was just such an immediately captivating story, especially when I consider it against the other Shonen Jump uh, anime and manga. 
because uh, it was so different, you know, and, and the character of Senku was so different that this is a character that, you know, he doesn't typically get beat up in a fight and then be like, I have to get stronger. His his challenges are overcoming the, the difficulties of his era, you know. His defeats are that he can't make a thing just yet, and then he has to come up with a new way to do it. And it just was – it was such an innovating uh, and, and just – breath of fresh air to the the shonen genre and uh it was just immediately captivating um and that was when we started working on the show where i got to bring in all of these lovely folks yeah yeah that i mean it for me at least uh, and all of the fandom i know that it was just everywhere you couldn't look on online or just in the stores it was just dr stone everywhere I, I kind of wonder like what you guys thought about your you know your script and everything how you got approached pretty much for your characters oh uh i'll i'll chime on that uh <laughs> <laughs> so uh, i'll first i'll mention yeah like my first time first thing that i heard about the show i was like oh, okay i hear that this is gonna be a popular show so i like looked up some pictures of it and i was like those characters look strange. I've never seen people <laughs> with faces like that. That was my first impression, honestly. Uh, I am now like completely in love with the show, including the character design. Um, but I was like, huh. And then uh, the next thing I found out was that it was going to be like, uh, I don't know, that it was being very hyped up. Um, and and then the next thing I found out was uh, that I was cast in it. And I didn't find out from Cliff. I found out from our friends, Anthony Bowling, who also works at Funimation. He's like, hey, congrats on Dr. Stone. And I was like, what? <laughs> Whoa. I was in the hall at Funimation. Wow. Like, oh, do you not? Uh, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> I was like, that was a good you know, one. I changed his mind. I'll, I'll even be. <laughs> and so I didn't, I didn't mention it that I knew about it until I was in with Cliff. Um, and then I was like, oh man, Anthony told me about this. <laughs> Cliff, doesn't, awesome. like, Cliff was like excited to keep the, the surprise, I guess. Um, but I think Anthony saw it on like a cast list or something. So that was funny. Um, and my first impression of the character and the script was, I was intimidated. Uh, Sinku is, uh, he's a genius. Um, and he says a lot of very big words uh, very fast, like they're no big deal. And he's so confident. And I had just come off a, a string of playing awkward, uh, unconfident boys. Um, so I was also very honored that Cliff was like thinking, oh yeah, Aaron can do a confident genius. Like, okay. Yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, for sure. Uh, yeah. Um, and the only other thing I'll, I'll mention is that I've always been a fan of uh, like like strategy games, like Age of Empires and, and stuff like that. Um, and they usually start with you in the Stone Age and then you work your way up through the tech tree and you become more and more advanced and you build a scientific civilization. And so like, it was very exciting for me. Oh, um, cool. It was very much like 10 to 15 year old Aaron's boyish fantasies. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> That's dope. And yeah, whoever wants to, oh, yeah, yeah, go next. Um, so yeah, uh, I knew I knew the show was uh, like that Funimation had licensed mm -hmm. it, that it we were we were gonna dub it. Um, but Kohaku doesn't show up for many several mm -hmm. episodes, um, and so as is usually the case when there's a show on the floor that you're interested in, you don't have any control. So it's like you know what I'm gonna I can't wait for the dub to come out. I'm gonna watch it, and I'm not gonna hope I'm gonna be in it um, <laughs> because I can't control that. And um, Cliff uh, pulled me in for Kohaku's first episode where she had a word. And so that was my first intro to the character was he had to kind of condense the entire story so far because I had not seen any of it. Condense the whole story, condense the character. And then I say one word and he's like, cool, see you next week. And in that week, I, I watched uh, some of the dub and I Googled the ever living crud out of Kohaku. And I, I was in love with her immediately. There are characters where you show up and you're like, I get why I'm here. I know what I bring to this That's character amazing. and I know what she's going to bring to me. And I've just felt like, on the same wavelength with her 
pretty much the entire time. Oh, that's awesome. So it's just been excitement. <laughs> that's such an awesome story. <laughs> I mean, connecting that fast too. And she was such a strong character. I, I loved her when I first saw her too. So amazing work. Um, but yeah, Josh, I wanted to know about you too. Uh, coming into it, it was very similar for me as it was for Felicia. Like, you know, Keen Row isn't introduced until, you know, pretty good ways into the first season, the first few episodes in. Um, I hadn't, I hadn't seen much of it other than just like a synopsis and some images. And like, I was under the impression that it was set actually in the past. And like Senku was like, oh. just some, like the first genius. And then when I like, or like, oh. like a, like a modern scientist or so, like, like that was starting to change the world or something. But then when I figured out what the story was, it's actually in the future, but kind of a post-apocalyptic thing. Like, that made it even cooler. Uh, and the, the, like that this is kind of him like revitalizing the world through, you know, lost knowledge essentially was just really interesting. Uh, I've always tried to find shows that I, I deem, I call them science church. It's just something that I try to watch every week that has something to do with <laughs> science and stuff like that. And Dr. Stone became my science church, my weekly science that church awesome. since we started. Uh, and, uh, like I really enjoy uh, with Keenrow specifically, I enjoyed the fact that he's very much just kind of a stoic country bumpkin that he's just there to do his thing. He's got his job. He's all about it and he wants to do it well. And he's got this bratty little brother to deal with <laughs> and everything is just like, yeah, no, I totally know this dude. Like uh, the, and the fact that he he's, so open to these new ideas though and to these these mm -hmm. things that he's willing to see and he, he can see that they are useful uh was really cool like it makes him a really cool character to play that like it yeah he's uncertain about it but he's willing to trust it and it's been to very great benefit for him oh well, man seeing that, seeing that the science was uh useful was literally keen rose story arc considering he got glasses so yeah <laughs> yeah started off with the spear thing and the same like oh, okay this can make my this can make my weaponry and like the tools i need for my job even better but then yeah the glasses giving him actual sight and that just he becomes almost the science evangelist after that yeah as i recall like, this, this is the power i see it now i get it now the, the spears were like pretty and so he was like, oh, this isn't really useful, but he still liked it. Like, he just yeah, didn't yeah. It was like, he liked it. It's like, oh, okay. I guess I like it. Yeah. And then he <laughs> starts to try to take it from him. Like, oh, <laughs> yeah. like, no. It's like, oh, you do care about it then, don't you? Uh -huh. care oh, man. I, I mean, just hearing you guys like talk about your roles. I mean, it's just like an origin story for me. I'm like, oh, I see. <laughs> Everyone connects somehow. And I think, I think in general, like um, playing upon what Aaron said as well, it it did look different. You know, a lot of times to a lot of us viewers, we're just like, what is this? Because it's, we're not used to it. You know, you look at Shonen Jump and you're like looking around and you're like, okay, well, we're the swords immediately or something like that. Like yeah. fighting immediately, but it was more interesting. A lot of science, obviously very intelligent, um, which brings me to the next question. Um, when leading up to the release of Dr. Stone, did you know how big it was going to become and how much promotion it was going to have? Because it was insane. Like, it was just like, you know, it was um, the promotion to me, I think, as a fan was pretty cool because I was like, this is going to be good because we don't see that a lot all the time. So um, did you know? Did you guys have any idea? I bet Cliff did. I did. <laughs> no. <laughs> he I can neither that. confirm nor deny. I who who could say? Um, I do think it's hard to think back to it now because it's been it's been so long now, and and I've directed so much anime since then. Um, <laughs> but the uh, I might have known that it was going to go on to Toonami, um, mm. if not before we started just after we started it was just um, after i remember you telling me yeah okay so i i knew that pretty soon and i was i was optimistic of it that it would because i i personally feel like we're in this this new golden age of anime um 
like in the in the two thousands when all of us were kids, um, we lived in a golden age of anime because all of the anime was starting to come out in the in the West, right? So like we were seeing all these really great titles like Dragon Ball and and Yu Hakusho and Sailor Moon and all these things, and but those had been older in Japan, you know, and they were only just making their way westward. And now mm. we're in this moment where there's so many great anime coming out at once um, that it's this, it's like I said, it's a new golden age of, of anime. And I was, I was really optimistic that it was going to go on to Toonami knowing that it was getting hyped and, and people were looking forward to it. And um, dare I say they were getting excited. Um, and uh so once it started rolling, I, I saw it, I saw the momentum and uh, I was like, well, this is going to be good. This is going to be something really special and, and something that people connect to. Oh, great. Did you guys know? Did you guys know? I have no <laughs> idea. And I, it's, uh, it's a little bit of a form of self-protection. Um, oh. You never know mm-hmm. what a show is going to do. I, I've had other shows come up that were going to be the next big thing. And then they were not. Um, and then you sometimes end up with a show. We, we were talking a little bit in the, uh, the pregame about uh, devil is a part timer. And that was a show that we did and it was super fun. We loved it. And I had no idea people would still be asking about it nine years later. Oh. So, um, you know, hype doesn't always equal sort of longevity. It doesn't equal uh, fan resonance. And I feel very lucky that this show kind of got to have it all. Um, And I'm so excited to, you know, maybe actually get out in the world and hear what fans think (laughs) about it again, because it sort of launched right at the, the beginning of all the pandemic stuff. So hopefully we'll be able to uh, to go out and see I folks and to be excited with all of you. Yeah. yeah. Um, did anyone else want to add on that? Add uh, to that? Nope. In line with in line with what Felicia said, yeah, you. I, I knew that the show was being pushed, but you don't always know if the story is going to okay. be worth the amount of advertising effort being put into it. Um, and so I think there were like there were just multiple beats as I was recording where I was like, okay, yeah, no, I think this is gonna, yeah, no, this is too good. Like it's, if, it's oh, okay. if, if they show this to people and it's this good, like it's gonna work. So uh, that's, that's why I felt confident about it. Oh man, I I'm trying to piece I, things in my brain right now for your, from your answers. And I'm I like, it's moment, just, for me, I think as a fan, okay, I'm just a fan girl. Just oh, remember no, that yeah, too. No. I, when I saw it and I first watched the first episode, my mind blew. I was <laughs> like, this is insane. You know, and a lot of people felt that way too. Um, you know, and it just blew up. Uh, I think after the first episode, they were hooked. They're like, what is this? It's different. You yeah. know, so mm-hmm. it kind of leads up to the next question. Um, how your friends, family, and also fans reacted to your success of Dr. Stone um, and the show. Um, if you'd like to share any experiences that were unique we would love to hear it. Oh, that's you guys. <laughs> Family, uh, they don't know. <laughs> like my dad, like my dad raises horses, so like, it's, oh, it's, okay. like he's an old school cowboy and rancher and stuff. Anime is not really on his radar or, or anything like that. My brother would absolutely is uh, would be into it. Uh, he doesn't really get a chance to watch much of anything, but he he's excited that that I get to be a part of some stuff that I enjoy like this. Oh, that's great. Um, but uh, yeah, and most of my friends are. The people you see here and they're in the show so <laughs> like they think it's good too <laughs> yeah it's very similar um my family they're happy for me they're they're happy i'm happy they're happy things Aww. are going well but it's just not really what's on their radar although um more recently um with this sort of new wave of things hitting tsunami it hasn't come down to uh dr stone yet but in sort of in the wild in my family relations and stuff i've been asked to sign things for my hero for like uh ancillary sort of kids uh in the network of the family and that's always super cool 
Mm-hmm. So like I get to be like a fun story about your third cousin who's in this thing that you really oh, love. Wow. <laughs> yeah. And uh, that's about as famous as I think I ever want to be. So yeah. I really enjoy that. Yeah. Yeah. My, my nieces and nephews through uh, my uh, nieces and nephews in law, uh, they're, they're huge into anime and they, they are really excited about a lot. And like, they can watch stuff like, like Dr. Stone. Cause it's more, like you said, it's a little more family friendly and accessible to a lot of them. And, uh, that is, a, they do love this show, and they. I think they watch almost everything that we put out on Toonami now. Oh wow! That's yeah, awesome. so they're they're way That's into smart. it. Nice, Aaron. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, I um okay. I'll talk about. I'm just gonna say. Does your mom know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, my my mom and my brother. I think they watched like three episodes. Uh, but they had a hard time tuning in, like to Toonami regularly. You know, they go to bed early, so. or just even fans. I mean, how they reacted. So. Uh, yeah, they've been really nice. I I met a Sinku who. Uh, it's been interesting seeing how Sinku cosplayers try to tackle the hair problem because it's so up. And yeah. so I want to do a quick shout out for the Sinku I met who did three heads of lettuce. Instead of what? doing anything with his hair, he taped three heads of lettuce to the top of his head. And that he went. He's smart. Yeah. No one will ever beat him. Yeah, because it's just That's natural. my favorite fan experience ever. Yeah. Was having that, him come very up much in the life. spirit of Sinku, you know. <laughs> the ingenuity. Solving. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was really fun by day three. <laughs> it was a little wilted. Oh, day no. three. It was the same oh, lettuce. No. It was the same lettuce. <laughs> is that serious? Are you serious? Or is, that, is that real? Well, yeah, because Friday I met him. Oh, my goodness. Saturday. I don't know why I was imagining this poor Senku cosplayer like going to the market every day and being like, I need three more heads of lettuce. Oh, no, I get a rolling that tape. And then on like Sunday, they're out of lettuce, so he has to substitute with green onions or something. Yeah. <laughs> Expensive. A lot of green onions. Oh <laughs> god. Um, <laughs> so much amazing. more tape on Sunday. That's our that's our Sunday. <laughs> Couldn't get lettuce anymore, sold out, so we had to get green onions. <laughs> they only had red lettuce. <laughs> <Why>? <laughs> I have to paint it now. <laughs> so like also Clifford, like since you, you know, obviously, you know, directed um voice directed all of this when these parts come about how I, I had another question for you especially like how do you figure out who gets each role i mean what goes through the what's the process um that is man that's a whole thing oh, um, yeah, I'm sure. so when i'm reading the manga i start i get ideas for it you know um and I, I start like formulating, I'm like, well, this seems, this is this character, um, you know, and, and I imagine their voice will be sort of along this vein, you know, if they're, if this is okay. the trope, right? Like, this is what they're probably going to sound like. Like Keenro is a great example, right? He's our glasses boy. Um, and what's interesting about Keenro is he's the one that's, he starts off not the glasses boy mm-hmm. because glasses don't exist, but then it's revealed over the course of the, the episode, he's the glasses boy. Right. Mm-hmm. And, um, so you kind of start to get a sense of like, well, typically this is how the glasses boys get played. This is how these characters get played. Um, and so I start kind of like mapping out, like these are the people oh. that I'm expecting. Um, but I am typically very much influenced by the Japanese performance. Um, okay. And so uh, there are some directors that they'll, they'll deviate and they'll, they'll feel like, oh, well, this would probably go more this way. Or, or I feel like it would hit better in the adaptation if the voice was like this. Um, I'm one of the ones that I, I prefer to stick as close to the Japanese voice as I possibly can. Um, and so, uh, like when you consider Senku, uh, Senku's Seiyu has a, a texture to his voice. It still has youth to his voice. Um, and I felt like Aaron had those, those similar qualities and could bring that together. And plus with so much experience, I felt very confident that he could play this confident genius um, awesome. that, uh, that he was talking about, you know, and, <laughs> and, um, but then also I really want to, I try to challenge people, people away from the things that they normally do and so like what Aaron was saying is that he had played so many uh not confident boys 
I, I was like, well, Senku will be something a little bit different for him. And I'm, I'm, I'm in for that, you know? And, and like, uh, Josh, Josh has been doing this forever. Uh, and, and you've played so many roles, Josh. Uh, but I don't, I don't know how many of the stoic glasses boys you get to play. You were the first so. actually to give me that type of role in like, because you were breaking the mold for me again. And it was, but it was in uh genocidal organ. Ah, and, there you go. Yeah. yeah. And then like, um, that's where I really kind of got to like, really start to play with that voice. And then not too long after that, a couple other people started using me for that voice because of you. So like, I mean, Inman started using me for it. Colleen cast me in my hero with that voice and then right. King Row. So yeah. like, yeah. Um, proofs in the pudding right there. Yeah. Like <laughs> yeah, you absolutely like, love to change like i think that's that's when i think of directors like every director has a different style and when i think cliff's style i usually think he likes to challenge people oh, he likes great. to give people the roles that they don't normally that's that you awesome. don't normally hear them in and yeah it's great yeah. and uh and i don't know and and when it came to felicia you know felicia's someone who i i've always had a lot of admiration and and love for uh in uh in her talent and uh but i in correct me if i'm wrong felicia i know you've played some strong girls but like uh such as in devil is a part-timer but this was one of those ones where i was like i feel like this will still be slightly different uh, for felicia and and kohaku is such an interesting character because one she's like the strongest character in mm -hmm. the show aside from mm -hmm. sukasa um and uh and she's so capable, but then also like she doesn't get the science stuff. So she, she has a, a little bit of snark. Um, and like, those were the things that I really like what Felicia was talking about. Those were the things that I was like, Felicia's going to rock this. Um, Cause uh, just knowing Felicia personally and, and her own uh, just expertise and humor. Uh, I knew it was going to, I knew it was going to oh. be a match. So. Yeah, no, you're totally right. And also I, I like you a lot too, Cliff. Uh, oh. Oh. Um, <laughs> you know, Cliff and I have known each other for a very long time. Um, but yeah, Kohaku is such an interesting... Um, I, I do get to play a lot of duality, which I really like, but not this combo, necessarily. Um, because she is the tank, she's the heavy, she is mm -hmm. the warrior. But she's also this like beating heart. Um, and one does not have to be sacrificed for the other. And I love that about her. It really gives you so much room to play when this character is just so genuine in everything that she does. Um, like, I don't know. There's just something about that plaintive quality to her that is deceptively, uh, simple, like you think like, oh, she's just this, but she's a million things under that. She's just going to be who she is at all times. And it's oh. it's a wonderful experience. I love, we call it Kohaken. When I show up and I get to Kohak. <laughs> favorite part of my yeah. life. I'm feeling the love between all of you guys. And it's just like really heartwarming. And I love hearing like, um, this actually br brings up to my next question. Is there anything specific about the character you voiced um, that you can relate with? It kind of similar to what you're saying or brought out, um, brought out of you while voicing the character. Um, if you can expand on that. And also Clifford, if you want to add anything, that will be really cool too. As they all start to think. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, like if you can, I, I could go on. Yeah. <laughs> but um, for me, Kohaku is like, I just get her. I get her. Um, she cares. First and foremost, she cares. She's got this village full of people that she cares about that she wants to protect. She, when she believes in something, it is, she's all in on it. And that's what her relationship is like with Senku. He shows up and he's like, here's how I can make the world better and how you can help. And she's like, I'll do it. You just point me at the problem and I'll kick it. Like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be here and I'm going to convince other people that this is the right thing. And I'm, I'm just very much the same way. It's like, I, I don't really do like, lukewarm 
on things. Okay. It's like I like it or I don't. And if I believe in it, I, we are going to make it happen. And I love her. I love her. I love her. Oh, that's great. That's awesome. I I just want to – this doesn't quite answer your question, Bampy. I'm sorry. It's but okay. If, if you, I'm just like, – anything oh, you want to add. It has me thinking about, like, something really exceptional about Dr. Stone characters, I think, is how earnest, like, almost all of them are. Gin is supposed to be the most dishonest one. Um, and he comes in and he's like, all I care about is myself my own hedonistic pleasure. Yeah. If you can do that and entertain me, I'm with you. And it's like, wait, why are you being so earnest about your skeeziness? Uh, yeah, Sinku is like, I just want science. I don't like really care about arguing philosophy with Tsukasa. Uh, yeah, I, I want to live in a world that excites me. Um, so I'm going to do that as long as I can. Uh, Y'all in? Like, everybody... <laughs> Everybody really is true to themselves in this show. I think that's part of the magic of it or part of the what it has instead of magic, you know, because mm. a lot of shonen shows have magic of some right. sort. The, the sort of interpersonal relationships, which is another thing I adore about this show, uh, also because I am friends with so many people in the cast, is it's not mean spirited. Um, they can pick at each other, they can eye roll, but it's, it all comes from this place of respect and love. I immediately thought of, uh, Kohaku and Chrome, who are such good friends and they can be so snarky to each other, but it's never meant to be hurtful. Nobody's trying to take anybody down a peg. We are a team and we acknowledge everyone's contribution and everybody's got their own skill set. And I just think it's neat. Yeah, it's really wholesome. Um, did you want to add anything, Josh or Clifford? I don't. I'm not. I don't really have a lot in common with Kinro that oh, okay. that, that I just that I can think of, other than like he. When we first meet him for a while, he really likes structure. He's really into like, okay, this is the way things are. Everybody has their place. These are the, the rules, rules of the rules set, and everybody follows them, and and it's fine. And then like he's he he likes structure, and so for for him to be able to let go of that, like, uh, like I I guess like th that for me is the one thing I can see that you know like I I do like I. I like things to be a certain way for me, you know, like where I am, where I'm comfortable and, and things like that. And that's, you know, it's a very human thing. And so like, just, uh, I can identify with him on that, but, um, in, in most every other ways, we're very different. The, okay. yeah. um, I do have some things. I have some, a few, uh, anecdotes that I would care to, to share. Um, kind we of all went so still. <laughs> like there was a vision based or predator everybody <laughs> oh. um one of my favorites uh one of my favorite instances of a blooper uh from dr stone was actually in i guess it was episode six uh which was where kohaku was most properly introduced um kind of expanding on this sassing thing that felicia was talking about but uh, Fel uh felicia you know it's her first time really playing kohaku um, Kohaku is pinned under the tree because she she fought against Sukasa, and uh, she's she's seeing Senku for the first time work science. Where he's like, "Look, if you get if you're if you feel like you're being crushed to death, I might be able to blow the tree up with gunpowder. If you feel like you can hold out, I can get you out more safely. But you need to tell me what you need, you know." And Kohaku says, "Yeah, I can hold on." Um, so Senku starts working on the the compound pulley. Um, one of my favorite moments uh, from mm -hmm. the early episodes. But there was this great read, and it's in the show, uh, and it's Felicia as Kohaku watching Senku put together the compound pulley, and she goes, what are you doing? Um, and Aaron had previewed the scene, and he burst out laughing uh, at Felicia's read, and he just goes, don't sass me! Um, <laughs> <laughs> and... Uh, and it was so it was so funny because it just was it was one of our first instances where where the ca a cast member was caught off guard 
by the other cast member oh. living in the moment. And uh, and it was in those moments are the moments that I I as the director kind of live for. Um, the moment where we can make the other there there's magic in the moment where the the other actor connects to the other act the first actor's performance. And um, and and like that that was just such a good moment to see it happen. Um, and uh, and beyond that, uh, I can tell you, each actor here uh, has, in different moments, made me cry <gasps> directing them. Um, and I might I might get emotional talking about it. I'm just gonna be honest with you. Um, but uh, there are these moments, and and every one of these guys can 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 attest to it that like I will I have no problem making an actor do a take again. Um, uh, I will make them do it again if I feel like it. If it can be better, if it can go farther, and I will make everyone do it again. Oh, um, and uh, each one of them has has always uh, risen to the challenge. Um, specifically with Josh, it was the the moment where Keenro wore the watermelon for the first time. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but like, those those lines where Keenro Keenro first acknowledges and like appreciates science, it was like yes, like Josh just nailed those, uh, and that's like the stuff that brings me to tears. I don't even know if I could talk about the other ones. I'm gonna start crying. Um, <laughs> but uh, so anyway, <laughs> that is amazing. I mean, you're definitely that is different for me to hear. Um, just how invested you know um that you are with your the cast and your friendships and it's just very nice i love i, I can't even speak <laughs> just really nice to hear um it brings up to the next question which is do you have a favorite part any of you guys of um in the anime that you can talk about that you know that you acted in or you know also directed in is there a favorite Gosh. part that happened there's oh, so much. Um, <laughs> okay. There, there is. There are moments uh, that have given me. We, I'm from Louisiana. We call them the frissons, but um, like just goosebumps, just chills. Um, the uh, the song, the the song from the past, um, connecting everyone, um, made me weep. Um, there is some stuff. Uh, in this season uh, with different factions sort of reuniting that I'm going to cry now. Um, <laughs> I recently, it's spoilers if you're not caught up on season two, but um, I had not seen my very dear friend Rico Fajardo, who plays Taiju, uh, in a year. I, I moved right before the lockdown, oh, wow. hadn't been able to see them. And then there's this line where I, uh, Kohaku sees Taiju and I love their relationship this like admiration she has for this guy that Sinku says is the strongest man like she's just all in he's an idol that's like her like just, you know posters on the wall like Hulk Hogan that is her her hero um and she just like she's like I I've never met you but I know who you are and she just sort of whispers his name. And Cliff had to ask me to come back in for more smile on it because I was crying. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but just those moments, these reunions and being so connected to the other people in the cast. Um, it was it's painful and it's healing all at the same time. It was just incredibly cathartic to be able to have like to kind of feel this loss that we've all been kind of pushing away because we didn't know when it would end. Um, and so it's just been beautiful. So those are my favorite moments, the ones where I cry. That's amazing. I love hearing it. Um, and Aaron and Josh. Any moments, uh, Keenro and Geenro are highly entertaining to me for multiple reasons. I have a little brother myself, so that it's really cool to be playing a character that has, you know, a little brother like that. And they obviously care for each other a great deal. Um, uh, for Keenro, my favorite part was obviously the, 
when he gets his sight for the first time, even with the watermelon head, that badass pose he goes into wearing the watermelon head is forever seared into my brain as both amazing and hilarious looking at the same time. <laughs> it's just so there's so many emotions happening in that scene. <laughs> um, but my favorite most recent one, and again, spoilers again, if you haven't seen the most recent one is, is kind of like just a highlight of kind of, of Senku's crew again, like, after our most recent thing with the, the end of this most previous season, um, when, uh, when uh, I'm trying to, I want to make sure I phrase this in a way that's not like too spoilery, uh, but when Senku and their team kind of, you know, prevails, they don't immediately start, like they just start welcoming in the refugees, uh, uh, you know, from the other group and are just like, no, Hey, look, this is what, this is, this is what we have. This is how we did this. Like this is, and, and just really just kind of opening up and explaining and being so welcoming. I mean, like, no, look, you can benefit from this too. And, and not just immediately, you know, there's no punishment. There's no anything like that. It's just, it, you guys are working against everybody's best interest. We're going to stop you. And then we're going to welcome you into it. Like that's, it's such a cool, like that, that's thing that's in, that's something to live for. That that's that's something to strive for. Is that sort of humanity? Yeah, it's real wholesome. It's it's <laughs> a wholesome show. Um, uh, okay, so uh, I've I've been voice acting for uh, nineteen years actually. Um, I'm I'm twenty eight, and uh, I started whenever I was nine years old. Um, and I actually haven't uh, ever cried while voice acting um, mm -hmm. until I think like a week ago. <laughs> uh, and it was during Sinku and Sukas's big scene. So that's my favorite scene right now. Man. Um, yeah, I won't spoil what happens, but. There's so much emotion in this. This is amazing. Like, <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, I but love also, that. I'll just mention a couple other scenes. Uh, the um the big the the light bulb scene with Senku and Chrome bringing light back into the darkness um that was a scene that I actually got to adapt the scripts for okay. and so like I had this very specific idea of the monologue in my head and and humanity conquering the darkness and it was just it it felt very special to me and everything like clicked in that moment and that was like a moment where like I felt like I don't know like worthy of the character in a way. Oh, um, wow. And so, yeah, that was a big one. And then really recently, uh, when, what's Caitlin Barr's character's name again? Nikki. When Nikki uh, hears the song, it's the same song. They keep getting us with that same song. <laughs> <laughs> when Nikki hears the song and simultaneously realizes that uh, Lillian Weinberg isn't alive, uh, and that she's going to join the kingdom of science. I thought that that like dual realization was like, I don't know, there's something really cool about that. And also Caitlin's performance really got me. So yeah, those are my favorites right now. Oh, awesome. Whoa, really <laughs> intense. I'm just, that's so cool. <laughs> Did you have a, a specific episode that you really like Clifford? Oh my God. There's, I so know there's a lot. <laughs> It's it's the biggest cop out answer, but it's too hard. It's too hard to pick one um, because that is that is the majesty of Doctor Stone. Is like every episode is excellent. I can't even think of an episode of Doctor Stone where I was like, oh, that one's just okay, or like that oh. one's that one's whatever. Like every episode is so good, and uh, it for me it's a lot of it's a lot of the moments. It's like we were talking about the moments when we in episode seventeen. When uh, when Ruri is telling the the one hundredth tale to Senku, and she takes him to the gravesite, and she finishes the story, and it transitions to be Byakuya's voice, um, that moment was is super dear to me. Uh, God, hold it together, Cliff. Come on. Um, but uh, but Kent Kent who plays Byakuya, he started crying uh, recording that, and uh, whoo. All right, yeah. sorry. Um, it's okay. <laughs> We're all but, here. Uh, like, <laughs> that great. Uh, that one, uh, we we joke about lines all the time. We all we all reference lines that the characters have said all the time. Um, uh, Aaron, one of my favorite lines of Aaron is when they're preparing for the grand bout, and uh, 
and uh, Aaron is talking about rigging the thing with with Ginro, and Ginro is like, "We're just gonna if we just get into a match where it's one of us against the other one, we just go boop." And Aaron goes, "Oh no, you sure got me good." Like this this read of of Aaron's talking about like how you throw the fight was so funny. Um, it's just one of my, it's just one of my favorites. Uh, Josh, we, we always go, my spear, um, <laughs> when, uh, when the golden spear gets destroyed, uh, <laughs> Felicia, I don't feel like we even say a real line. We just always go, Oh, I'm going to stab him. Because <laughs> <laughs> Kohaku, whenever Kohaku gets mad, like, especially in season one, she's standing there with her knives out. She just is like angrily oh. shaking. Um, and so, so Felicia would like get in the moment where she'd be like, oh, I'm going to stab him. I'm going to stab him. <laughs> going to happen this time. Um, <laughs> never did. Uh, it's, uh, when, when Aaron was first, uh, when Aaron was first getting into the character, uh, the thing that he would say to like get himself into character wasn't even a real line. But like Senku has all these moments, especially when he's first working with the villagers that are like mad scientist e. You know, he starts making like the really sinister faces, and 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 Kohaku even says all the time, she's like, "You look and sound like a bad guy right now." Um, so we started we started saying all these things. Uh, Aaron would say this thing to get into character. We'd go, "Yeah." You're strong, but I'm evil. And, uh, and it was just a, it was just the thing he needed to bring out, like the mad scientist of Senku. Sometimes, especially in the early episodes. Now, Aaron just steps in the booth. And he's like, "Yeah, I'm Senku." Uh, but uh, but it's so funny. And there, those are all the things that I I think about with this show. Is like we have so many things that have have persisted as jokes and and that we reference and we call back to with each other and uh it that's that's just the stuff that's that sticks out to me forever oh so. man this is like a magical thing that's happening right now i i i think out of you know i i researched a lot right before i got to talk to you guys and you know i think that in general like a lot of people we're gonna get to the questions that people have for you guys um that we got online um, the first question today is from Michael. If you were stuck in a new stone age and joined the kingdom of science, what something from modern times would you ask Senku to reinvent? Ooh. Uh, pizza rolls. <laughs> That's a, yeah, I, I like that one. It's very... But it's I would like, also hmm. accept bagel bites. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that could be an answer too. <laughs> a pizza-based snack product. Mm. Let's see. Let's he see. Has, he didn't reinvent the microwave yet, did he? Like he hasn't done like a microwave or any radiation things yet. Mm -mm. Not yet. I didn't think so. Yeah, something like a microwave, some sort of faster cooking <laughs> cooking implementation. Yeah. Uh, Roasted fire so, pits are great, so that you can make <laughs> your bagel. They are not. The teamwork makes the dream work here. <laughs> you and I gonna have pipe and hot pizza rolls. That's right. Mm -hmm. Um. I feel like I'd be like, can we please get air conditioning? Can we please work on air <laughs> oh, conditioning? God, yes. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll just throw mine behind that. <laughs> air conditioning? Yeah. Is that like everybody? <laughs> everybody? But you know, there's another contro controversial one. There's another controversial question here. I don't know if it's controversial, but amongst yourselves, what did you like and what you did you not like about certain characters in the anime? Like, or maybe we can just answer, did you not like one character from the anime? And we could talk Felicia? about that. Felicia? <laughs> knows. He knows I'm ready. I didn't. So here's the thing. Okay. One of the things that uh, Kohaku and I share is this sort of paladin nature. Um, and Gen. Gen <laughs> showed up. And he was so shady and so duplicitous and Kohaku didn't trust him and I didn't trust him. And if I don't trust you, I can't like you. So I still am coming around. He's he's proven himself at this point. But there was most of that first season. He'd show up and I'd be like, uh-uh, I don't, mm-mm. He's not, 
He's going to, he's going to turn. I just know it. <laughs> um, I also started out not a big fan of Ginro, but that turned around almost as soon as I heard Justin Briner speak in that character. <laughs> <laughs> um, he is so good at this character who is supposed to be sort of unlikable. He's the, the little brother that you kind of don't want to invite along, but he's mm. made him so funny so funny um that now he's he's one of my favorites but yeah again again and i are not oh not kosher <laughs> i didn't like ginro very much either at the start <laughs> <laughs> it's a pattern <laughs> Oh. Mostly because I'm like, I, I, he's the brother I do identify with, where I'm like, oh shit, I see a lot. Oh, I wouldn't survive a post apocalypse. What a. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes. like, I saw, oh, I would need a big brother like Keenro around. Yeah. But yeah, for the same reason, once I heard Reiner playing him, it's just, okay, no, it's a completely, like, it's still that brattiness and there's that selfishness and that little, he's kind of like, no want to work but whatever you do it for me big bro that's all, all that whole thing you like that he makes sound just so funny like he, like Briner has a way of making brats sound lovable and I yeah. think it goes back to kind of what we were saying that uh these characters are so genuine because mm -hmm. Ginro is just Ginro and he's not trying to convince you that he's not selfish. He's not <laughs> trying to convince you that he's a hard worker. He's just being himself. And mm -hmm. there's something really endearing about that. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. think that's why Hyoga is the only real villain is because he's mm -hmm. hiding an ambition. Um, mm. if, if, if Hyoga were like all the other Dr. Stone characters who we're gonna come around and like because that's kind of what happens in Doctor Stone is like with magma, for example. Um, if if Yoga were like that, then he would have walked up to Sukasa and been like, "I don't like being your second in command. I'd like to be leader of this outfit." Mm. Uh, and maybe he would have splintered off, or maybe Sukasa would have been like, "All right, well, you can have your chance to take your shot when you want to." And then, you know, they'd have that forthright relationship. But instead, Yoga waits for his chance to catch him by surprise. And that's what's like unforgivable in Dr. Stone. What appropriate <laughs> use of language you while, you, while, you, while you said that. Just It was just so yeah. well timed. <laughs> <laughs> that's, uh, that's Sarah Wiedenhut. Uh, she voices Suika. The voice of Suika. Hello. <laughs> The Melon Child. <laughs> Detective Suica spinoff series win. Yeah. Right. Oh. Anytime. <laughs> Any oh, man. Any oh. I'm, I'm just, I think that uh, for today, I'm just really happy to see, hear like the back end, some stuff that you guys didn't like, because usually people are like, what do you like? But it's interesting to hear the reasons why you guys didn't like certain characters because we all have those characters that were like, no, you know, mm -hmm. and they, they test us. Um, th if there's anything else, I think that we're going to, you know, wrap it up right now because that is like nine questions. And, you know, of course I would like to ask more questions, but we got to end this. Um, but, you know, of all the products, uh, project sounds really fun. I think that, you know, I do want to ask, um, is there anything coming up for you guys? that you're excited about and that you want to talk about today or you want to share with anyone that's watching. Gosh, I don't there's know if I, it's not NDA. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if there's anything yeah. I can. Watch Dr. Stone on Toonami. Yeah. <laughs> got that. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's for, I guess for me, it's just Dr. Stone's on Toonami now. Uh, My Hero season five is on Toonami. We're mm. all part of that too. Mm. Um, and uh, those are the only things I think I am allowed to discuss presently. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So stay tuned. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I'm, I'm really excited. Internet. I know that a lot of people are super stoked for what's to come. Um, I have like a stash of Dr. Stone 
fandom stuff on the side of my room. So I'm very, very excited to see what's coming up next for all of you. Um, thank you so much for all of your time. All the projects sound like a lot of fun and I'm excited. So thank you so much for the cast of Dr. Stone for being here. It has been a huge honor for me. So make sure to check out all of our amazing guests for what's coming up in the next following weeks. And thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you. Thank you Thank so you much. Mandy. Bye, guys. Thank you.